welcome to the first manufacturing cost budget. I have kept this production budget slide from the previous section. In case you do not have the production numbers, we will use these numbers again and again. Direct materials budget is a detailed plan in which we try to figure out how much raw material of each kind we would need to meet our production needs, how much inventory of raw material we would keep, and what would be the direct material purchase cost. So, first important thing to note is that for direct material budget, the starting point is production budget, not sales budget, because material is purchased based on what we want to make, not what we will sell. Second point worth noting is that just like we talked about finished goods inventory in the production budget, here we will talk about raw material inventory. The company may want to keep inventory to avoid stockouts or to account for spoilage. Once we calculate how many units of raw material need to be purchased, we can multiply it by the expected price of raw material to figure out how much the direct material will cost each month. So, we will start with production needs for each month, calculate direct material needed for the month in units, and then calculate it in dollars. Let's jump in. So, we have some more information available for our Murdoch company here. It needs 5 pounds of raw material to make one unit. Company wants to have raw material in hand equal to 10% of next month's raw material needs. You are given beginning inventory for the quarter as well. Finally, you also know how much each pound of raw material will cost. So pause and think how you will put the materials budget together. So we will begin making the budget with columns for each month and one for, for the quarter. We copy down the production needs from the production budget in the first row. You can go back to the production budget slide if you do not have the numbers in front of you. In the next step, we multiply production units with amount of material needed to make each unit. Third row gives us pounds of raw material needed each month for the production needs. But we are not done yet because company wants to keep a 10% raw material inventory at the end of each month. The red arrows show that ending inventory is 10% of the numbers in the next month's column. We can have the ending inventory for April and May using the arrows. But what about June? Remember, for June's ending inventory, we need to know July's production needs and take 10% of that in this column. We will revisit this number very soon. Just notice right now that ending inventory in June is also the ending inventory for the quarter, as the yellow arrow shows. The other yellow arrow shows where the beginning inventory for the quarter is coming from. The whole procedure is very, very similar to the production budget and can be solved using our equation as we will see soon. Blue arrows show that end inventory of the previous month is the beginning inventory for next month. But this logic does not apply to April since we do not have the column for March. So we are given ending March inventory in the problem to be 10,000 pounds. In the end, we multiply the units of raw material with the price per unit to get to cost for raw material purchases for each month and then for the quarter. We still have the issue of $18,000 18, of desired inventory units in June. You can try to get it yes, yourself before you turn the slide. So what we have on this slide is an extended production budget including July and August. If you do not have it already, you can print or keep the production budget handy or you can go back and copy down the numbers. We extended our arrows from June to July to show where the desired ending inventory is coming from. 
the company keeps 20% of next month's needs in ending inventory. So we need August sales number. So we need August sales numbers as well. Do you remember? We wondered why we are given July and August numbers on the very first slide on the Murdoch problem. This is why. So 8,000 in July column is just 20% of August sales and 7,000 in beginning inventory is end inventory of the last month. So in July, we need to make 36,000 units since it takes five pounds of material to make one unit. Our total raw material needs for July would be 180,000 pounds. The company wants to keep 10% of this in its June inventory. So we will get 18,000 by first making a budget for July production and then using it to extend our material budget to get the June ending inventory. Once again, compare the steps in the table to the familiar formula. What we need to add to the account is equal to what we will take out plus what we need for next month minus what we already have in beginning inventory. Whichever method works for you is fine. Just keep a clear head about the numbers. You don't want to get lost. This problem is about material budget. We are given production in units, our inventory needs and the cost of raw material. The question wants you to calculate the desired ending inventory for May. So you need May production, May's beginning and ending inventories and material cost. You may want to take a whack at it before you turn the slide. Here, I just copied the Marina Company numbers over. So, there are several ways of solving this problem. We can start with a simple logic. The ending inventory for May will be 20% of June's production needs. Second point to note, each unit needs 3 yards of material and we need 20% of it. And then, we're done. Another way to solve this is to stick to the statement format we just learned. So if you look at the May column for a minute, you will see how we got 9300 yards on the previous slide using the format. Remember the arrow connecting 9300 to 46,500 shows the connection between the two. One is just 20% of the other in this problem. Now, let's look at the next problem for Marina. This time, we need to figure out the April raw material cost. So, think about the steps for direct material budget. We need production units for April, inventory desired, and the cost of raw material per unit. Let's do it. So, we start with the April production, multiply it by raw material needed for each unit, and get to total raw material needed for April. Then, we add target inventory, which we know is 20% of next month's material needs. So, we do a little side calculation for May raw material needs and take 10% of it, 20% of it. That gives us 8,700 yards of target ending inventory. Are you with me so far? Next, we subtract beginning inventory to figure out how much material should be purchased. When we have 28,920, we are done. Remember that in a T account for materials in cost chapter, we use the equation to calculate what gets used in production. We are using exactly the same formula here, except that we are solving for purchases and we are given material to be used as well, to be used as well as beginning and ending inventory. We will see this more clearly very soon. So here we have raw material purchases in yards of 48,200 times the price per yard and we have the cost of material to be purchased in April. I hope that was helpful. Welcome back to operating budgets. Remember we have already made sales, production and materials budgets. You will need them handy when you work through some problems here. The next budget in line is a direct labor budget. It tells us what we would need to pay for payroll and how many hours we would be working for. Planning for 
hours and rates in advance helps companies in managing future hirings, cash payments to workers, training and other employee related costs. Let's look at Murdoch's labor situation. Murdoch takes 0 0.05 hour to make each unit and pays $10 an hour to all its employees. Fairly simple. Remember that we will be paying workers by the hour, so we should multiply units to be produced by the hour fraction of 0 0.05 hour and not by 3 minutes because then you will have to convert minutes back into hours. So let's get to hours needed for production for the quarter ending June 30th. important thing to note here is that we start with production needs not budgeted sales because we are talking about production or manufacturing cost not selling cost so we get the hours to be worked each month multiply by the rate and we are done that's fairly easy so now we have some more information on Murdoch to make a manufacturing overhead budget they use direct labor hours as the allocation base for applying manufacturing overhead rates. The rate is already given to us at $20 per direct labor hour. They also have some fixed monthly expenses out of which $10,000 is depreciation. This is a crucial point and we will understand it very soon. Let's look for the ingredients we need to make our budget. So here on top, we just copied the problem with relevant numbers in the bold for you to be able to see easily. We start with direct labor hours needed each month. We just calculated this in the direct labor budget. Next, we multiply the hours in each month by our variable manufacturing overhead rate of $20 given to us in the problem and get to total variable overhead costs. Then. We add the fixed lump sum for each month and get to total manufacturing overhead costs of $155,000. But we are not done yet because we have to deal with depreciation first. Do you remember that depreciation is an accounting charge to cover yearly use of machinery, but it is not a payment to be made to any external party. So although it is an expense to be charged to income statement, it is not to be paid out of our cash account. So, when we pay cash for manufacturing overhead expenses, we will pay a lesser amount, reduced by the amount of depreciation. So, here, the cash needs for manufacturing overhead cost would be $125,000 and not $155,000, which is the total cost for manufacturing overhead. Are you with me so far? Let's quickly practice what we just learned. Here, we have a company with two departments and different labor hour needs and per hour labor costs given to us. The first question says, if you have to make 30,000 units, what is the total direct labor cost? You should get it without any problem by now. Just combine the cost of the two departments and you are done. The second question adds a small twist to the problem. It says that the company has to pay overtime if labor hours worked in any department exceed 50,000. If you have the answer to the first one, you are almost home with this one too. Are you? Take your time, work it through and then turn the slide. Here at the top, we have the first problem again with relevant numbers underlined and highlighted. We get total number, number of hours needed in each department and multiply it by the rate to get total direct labor costs for the month. It is easy to see what will happen in part 2 of the problem. Since department A has 60,000 hours, it will have to pay overtime and total direct labor costs for the month will go up. By how much will it go up? Let's see. So we have everything the same here except that we pay for the additional 10,000 hours in department A. 
Notice total hours required in department A are 60,000, but we have the upper bound of 50,000 direct labor hours to be paid at the normal rate. So the extra 10,000 hours will be paid at the rate of a time and a half of $20, which would be $30 an hour. The total direct labor cost now is 1.75, which is higher by $100,000 due to the difference in the overtime rate for the 10,000 hours. Remember, we have to now pay $30 an hour on 10,000 hours instead of 20, which we paid in the previous question. Here, we start with a simple question on manufacturing overhead budget. We have the variable rate, the fixed lump sum, and the problem number one gives us the number of hours we need for the month. So we just have to put together a manufacturing overhead budget. By now, you should not need a full statement to solve this problem, this kind of a problem. The answer should be pretty simple. You will see this in detail too. Next problem has a slight twist. It is asking you to calculate an overhead rate for all the manufacturing overheads for the month of December. Let us take a look at both these problems slowly. So here are the details of the first problem solution. Remember to be careful about what the question is asking. Here the question is about total budgeted overhead, so our answer should be $140,000. But if the question was about cash disbursements for manufacturing overhead, the answer would be 124000 and not 140000 because we do not have to pay cash for depreciation. Clear? Now, here is the solution to the second problem. Again, be careful about the language of the question. The question says, what is the total predetermined overhead rate, meaning combining both variable and fixed cost and then calculating the rate. So we reach $116,000 of total manufacturing overhead and then divide it by total direct labor, I'm sorry, and then divide it by total direct labor hours for the month to get a manufacturing overhead rate of $29 per direct labor hour. 